We're here at Stanislaus State for the first Turlock Women's Leadership Roundtable hosted by the Turlock Journal. This event brings together women leaders to talk about leadership. But before we get to the discussion, let's hear what leadership means to the people who are here. What does leadership mean to you? I think leadership is just being involved and having a say in something. And I think it's really important that women especially know that they have a role in any type of leadership, decision making, processes, especially on campuses and getting involved in student leadership even or being a part of a sports team. There's tons of ways for women and for uh, students to get involved in leadership. And for them to take that on, it really helps their character, their charisma, and really lock comes into their potential. I think if you have somebody who inspires you, it changes the way you think, and those kind of people are so important in our community, and there are so many here today. Leadership means uh, someone that can take charge, someone that's independent, confident about themselves. They can take on that role to, you know, persuade people, to encourage people, to be a positive outlook to others. Leadership to me is about action. Um, actions speak louder than words. We've all heard that, and it's true. People can give a beautiful presentation, but it comes to actions. You watch a leader um, and you notice things. That person inspires you. It, it, we all should be self-motivated, but be, being in, and watching a leader, that should inspire you to be the best you can every time you go out, out into the world. Uh, and I'm very happy that in my career, I've had great leaders to, to uh, watch and try to emulate. Well, as the principal at Tulloch High School, I, um, I have a phrase I use, which is shared leadership. Um, and this is not about me being the principal at Tulloch High School. It's always about what can I do for our teachers to bring them along and make them leaders. So shared leadership was something I was mentored in as from Dana, who's one of our speakers today, um, the superintendent of Tulloch Unified. And it's something that I continue to try to carry forward in my job now. And now it's time for the roundtable discussion. We recognize that we have made great strides in leadership positions. Uh, so one can come away with the perception that we have accomplished our goal. But as Dr. Jun said, statistically, we are statistically in there's not equality. And so we haven't completed the goal, we haven't finished our job and we still need to strive towards that. I don't look at it like I'm a councilwoman because I think it's kind of obvious and I just I look at it as I'm supposed to be representing everybody but there's a culture that that tells people over and over again that the, a woman should do certain things and it still comes through even young officers will expect me to hold the baby if we're, we're doing something and I don't have a child, so I'm not really comfortable with that. And, and most of them are men, you know, and they have their, their fathers. So it's funny how society just dictates and you're supposed to just accept it. And I think it's kind of our job to go out there and tell people, you know, look, this is just, we're all doing the same job and there shouldn't be an expectation. We should all just take the, the roles that we, roll, we do and just keep moving. And if you want to accept it, embrace it. But if you don't, just be who you need to be and confident. I think a lot of women leave the workforce at the time in their lives when they should be stepping into those leadership roles because they're not supported in terms of caring for their families. I was a single mom. I didn't have a choice. I had to keep working um, and in that sense climbing the, the so-called ladder. But I think a lot of women are put in a position where they have to make that choice and so they lose ground in terms of experience and years on the job. If you had all girls in Korea, in the generations before him, hundreds of years before, they have a genealogical tree. It's all written in book. And um, if you got married, the only children that showed up in the book, guess who? Are boys only. So my father was listed as having zero children. He had three daughters, okay? And uh, so his brother felt sorry for him. His brother gave him one of his sons. I know, it sounds crazy. We never met him, he, was, he lived in Korea, but he gave him a son so his brother could have a child. So it was not until I graduated and I, and, uh, from Princeton with my PhD that my f one grandfather <laughs> called, wrote me, I, didn't, I couldn't read it, it was in Korean, my mother translated, but said that they were going to add my name to the, to the genealogical tree because I have a, a PhD from Princeton <laughs> that no man had achieved. <laughs> Thank you. 
you know, I, I tend to believe that as women, we can't help but um, lead institutions the way we lead our families. Our values and our priorities are very, very similar. They can't help but bleed into one another. I'm always telling my three children that it's a mindset of gratitude and not entitlement. And I try to, I try to really focus on that with, with employees and, and how I lead. I think that it has forced me to speak up more. Um, and, you know, I, I'm kind of ashamed to say this, but when I was young and sitting at the table with these executive leaders, um, I had ideas and I had thoughts, but I'm just the PR girl. I don't have an engineering degree. Um, so I was uh, totally discounting myself and, and the worth, but I, I wouldn't speak up, I wouldn't say anything. Later I'd go to the manager who was running the meeting and I would tell him my idea or my thoughts. And wow, that's a great idea, Michelle. Why didn't you say something? And I think people in my generation, there was a tendency at one point to try to be more masculine and, you know, kind of behave more like a man. And I don't think I ever did that. I tried to always be who I was and to be feminine and a woman, but also strong and effective in leading organizations. Have a focus. Learn what you want to do. This is going to be a very long life. I've had a lot of different titles, but I've really done the same thing throughout my career. So kind of get a sense and I believe in self-analysis. What, what is your passion? What do you like to do? You know, don't spin your wheels focusing on something that really doesn't fulfill you. Be willing to be flexible sometimes with your leadership. Um, you know, kind of give and take where you can. Um, it's worth that time and effort to kind of treat, pe teach people how to treat you. Um, but sometimes it, it, it might be that they're just not where you're at at that moment. Karen said there's no crying in business, and I tend to subscribe to that theory as well. But in my life and career, I've also not been afraid to show my human side or my softer side. Um, not because I'm a woman. I've, I've worked with men that have, you know, kind of wear their heart on their sleeves too. And, and you can't be an emotional wreck all the time. You can't be a sniveling, you know, sobbing, crazy person. But, but it's okay to show your softer side sometimes. It makes you more human. It makes people, I believe, makes people respect you a little bit more. Um, so you got to find a balance between being in control and in charge and holding people accountable and letting people see your softer side sometimes too.